Food, 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 food. Yum. So, yeah. yeah. So, we're just going to go through some of the things that we ate, places that we ate, kind of give you a good, bad as we're going through. There's a lot of different places. We're not going to mm-hmm. go through every item we ate, everything else. Mm-hmm. Suffice it to say, if you have allergies, which we don't, mm-hmm. they're, they're easy to work with. First thing they ask you. Um, yeah, it's, everything's great there. Mm-hmm. If you have any dining specifics that you want to have done, they'll work with you. But we didn't have any of those, so don't expect us to talk about what's gluten-free options or what's mm-hmm. the peanut allergy stuff. Or what's meat, we don't, meat-free. Yeah, or we're not vegan or anything else, yeah. so, so don't expect that. But you, you want to start talking about our list yeah. of places? So the first place we ate at was Carnation Cafe. We did it on our first morning when we got to Disneyland and walked into Disneyland. We were super hungry as we woke up very early, and we knew that they had Mickey waffles. And, of course, that's what we both ordered. Yeah. Uh, great place, very quaint. It's right off Main Street, um, so it's quiet. You don't hear like all the noise of Main Street, but, but you, you still watch the, it. You hear the buzz. You feel yeah. the excitement of people walking through, but you're not mm-hmm. right on. Yeah, it's not as like they're walking right beside you. Right, right. right. So we had a great time. The Mickey waffles are really good there. That actually was a recommendation from Happiest Vlogs. And you get a strawberry syrup with it. And the Mickey waffle are not like the mini Mickey waffles. It comes about... their head size. Yeah, their head size. Like this <laughs> big. And you can catch that in our first uh, Day 2 Part 1 video. Yeah, and they were good. Everything was good. The mm-hmm. people were nice. They're all wearing Very the little nice. carnations. They yeah. had that. It was easy to sit down, easy to order. Again, we went first thing, so we didn't have to okay. wait. You, there okay. might be a wait. There probably was a wait later right. on in the day. But for breakfast, it was a good choice. It was a walk-in. It was a good choice for us for yeah. breakfast. Next, uh, place Again, we're, we're not about doing this necessarily in order. In order, yeah, we just, but just had that one have a list, list that we're going to go through. Tomorrowland Terrace. We actually ate there a couple times, and there's a couple cool things about Tomorrowland Terrace. It's where the Jet Eye training goes on, so you can watch that. Watch the kids do while their you eat like lunch thing, fighting against Darth Vader yeah. and that kind of stuff. And um, I got chicken nuggets the first time we went there because I just wanted something like normal, plain. Um, I think we actually ended up eating there our first lunch, wasn't it? It might have been. Yeah, maybe. And then you got this. The chicken sandwich. Yeah. And it was, it had like a slaw. Like a Hawaiian thing. slaw kind of. Um, it was slightly spicy, but it wasn't like yeah, spicy. It, like it was like it had flavor. Pineapple in it or something. Um, it was amazing. It was yeah. really good. It was well cooked. It was juicy. Yeah. Uh, the, I mean, it was it was a theme park, excuse me, it was a theme park sandwich, mm-hmm. but it was, I did not expect to, I, I, I was like, it. I'll eat this, it'll be fine, it'll be a food. I was like, I'm going to get this again. I literally yeah, we, said that. We, I'm going to get this again. He, we went back yep. to get it again. Yeah. And I was, got it yeah. as well. And that's going to be a theme for this whole stuff about the food. The food at Disneyland mm-hmm. is better Overall. objectively. This isn't just subjective. It's the just, food we quality, eat, we the food freshness, at Disney World. the food um, choices, the selection, mm-hmm. the variety, everything about yeah. the food at Disneyland yeah. is better than Disney World no matter who you ask. Yeah. There is no question that the food is good there. So if you're going to be eating on site, you'd rather do it at Disneyland than Disney World. Um, and it's worth it. It is just plain better. Yeah, and thoroughly enjoyed it. So where was the next place? Uh, Red Rose Tavern over in Fantasyland. This is the redo of Pinocchio Village Haas. That's what it's called, Village Haas, which is still in Disney World. And um, one cool thing Disneyland does about its quick service, right. it's not your typical nuggets, chicken, uh, burger, you know, what I call your meat and threes. Like, basically, that's what they Hot offer. Hot dogs, hamburgers, chicken it nuggets. It themes it to the area very, very well. Right. And um, the Red Rose Tavern does that. Um, I think, overall, this is probably the least favorite place I ate at. at I think they had a great variety and a great menu. Mm-hmm. I just didn't want anything on the menu. That's just... Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's the thing is... We eat there for lunch. Right. They do offer breakfast as well. Um, the videos that we saw basically had the same, like, thoughts as us, you know, when they were eating breakfast as we had for lunch. It was nice. It, I think it it does not compare to the other areas of Disneyland or DCA. But the location's great. Location's great. Great for people watching. Great for relaxing. Don't Just don't expect to go in and be like, I'm going to get the gray stuff. And this is going to be like eating with the beasts. And all. Yeah. It's, it's just, it's fine. Again... If you wanted those selections, they're great selections. Mm-hmm. We just didn't see them on the menu we wanted. Mm-hmm. But think about it. Not seeing anything on the menu we wanted means that there was a variety on the menu. That it yeah. was different than, like you said, normal park food. I mean, it wasn't... I had the um, their version of, of like, a poutine. Um, and it was it was good. It was decent. 
Um, but, it was, but it was poutine in Fantasyland. Yeah. You're not going to get that at Disney World. No. They're not adventurous enough to, to offer Disney things like that to get or that. Epcot. Mm-hmm. They're, they're just not going to offer that kind of thing in Fantasyland. Where this, they were willing to go out on a limb and say, we're going to have breakfast pizza for, for breakfast or whatever, mm-hmm. you know, different things that they're just not going to be willing to do mm-hmm. at Disney World. So if you want those things, it's there. We just didn't like the choices, really. Mm-hmm. Um, so next place? So the next two places we're going to talk about is the, literally the two Mexican places of Disneyland and DCA. The first one is Rancho del Zocalo. Zocalo. Rancho del Zocalo. There we go. This one is located in Disneyland. It is very similar to um, it is, it is the like other one. It is right next to Big Thunder Mountain. Like <laughs> you see the train go around and stuff. It's yeah. really cool. Yeah. So you're like in uh, Frontierland. Yep. And then it's like also Mexico kind of same, especially back in the day. Um, basic Mexican fare. What um, is the downfall of that place is it's divided into two areas. One place has your typical like tacos, burritos. And the other place has your more like if you want like chicken. Um, like a piece of chicken or those types of things or taco salad. Yeah. So one line was really long, one line was not. And of course the items that we wanted. We wanted the street tacos, tacos yeah. which that just, it was where everybody else was going. Yeah, was the problem was it was also the first line you see as you go in. Mm-hmm. And if you don't know there's two lines for the different types of food, mm-hmm. everyone just goes to the first one. And then there was people like halfway through the line realized, oh, I want that. I guess I should go over there. Yeah. So you've already waited behind them because they don't know what they're doing. Um, but the food, Food was good. Yeah, I mean, it was it was, it was quick Mexican good. food. It was good. There wasn't any. It was very the hearty. Quality was fine. Um, the rice was well cooked. All the stuff that was in there was good. Mm-hmm. Um, eating it, the outside, there's long tables. You kind of have to like either yeah. share tables or whatever. Um, they were still good about cleaning up at yeah, people, but it was a high traffic area. area. It was. So there was a lot of cleaning that needed to be done. Mm-hmm. Um, I enjoyed it. Yeah. But we didn't need to go back. No, we did not go back. I actually am the only person out of the two of us that ate at the other Mexican area, right. which is in the Pacific Wharf area, and that is Cocina Cucamonga. A very similar um, menu. I uh, instead of getting like the, the three different I, types of street tacos, I got like I would pork. say Casino is a little more traditional Mexican as well. I feel like it had a little bit more. It wasn't quite as taco heavy. Stuff. Yeah, but it had like. I think it had mole sauce, which is mm-hmm. was not at the other. Like there was there was a little. It's just a yeah. little bit more authentic, I think. Um, but yeah, but, what did you get? Um, I got the just pork tacos versus the pork beef and chicken. Um, I would say overall, comparative to Zucla. Zucla. There we go. That one. Um, and then and he didn't get that. He no. got what'd you get? I got a chili um, in a bread sourdough bread bowl, of course, from mm-hmm. the the wharf area. And I can't remember. What the, place was called but, but I it, think was, it was called wharf cafe it was called their hearty chili mm-hmm. and it was hearty it had it some really veggies good. in it it was very now i would never get that at disney world because if you're at disney world it's usually like 100 degrees <laughs> so hearty it was chili, not 100 degrees while we so, were there. so hearty chili is not a good idea but hearty chili where we were at in the evening when we had it when we had our jackets i yeah. think we had our jackets on yeah it was perfect. It mm-hmm. was great. And to have the authentic sourdough bread bowl, everything, mm-hmm. I was like, this is great. And it wasn't that expensive. Um, the line wasn't that long. They had other soups, but the chili, it just mm-hmm. called my name. And by called my name, I mean the server, the person that was taking my order was like, I said, I don't know what he, what he suggests. She's like, get this. It's really good. So mm-hmm. that's why I got it. And she was right. It was really good. Um, but it was chili. Mm-hmm. But it was good chili. I was I, pleasantly I surprised with how it good it was because it wasn't the just it wasn't just tomato juice and beans and it wasn't meat. your hormel can right it was it had chunks of like green pepper in it mm-hmm. and onion and i mean it, it was it was hearty chili and it was not and they were fairly quick as well yeah it was not what i expected from a theme park mm-hmm. soup i guess yeah. it was really good and fresh because they keep making it yeah. so now we also ate at cozy cone and we'll talk more in depth about the food uh, but cozy cone is four different cones that you can go to to get different items. Um, one cone has like your normal like just treats, like think of pretzels, popcorn, that kind of stuff. And the other three might one might have like ice cream, and the other two might have more of their um, known cozy cone foods. And we got the mac and cheese there as popcorn and the corn there. Um, I enjoy cozy cone overall. Yeah. Um, something different and of course you're once again immersed back into radiator springs which we really enjoyed yeah the 
Seating was a little bit hard. The seating was not great. Yeah. Because they wanted the authentic feel of Cozy Cone, it wasn't going to be a big cafeteria style seating area, which means it's not that easy to do it. But almost everything they serve was easy to kind of on the go. Handhelds. It was handhelds. It was popcorn in a a, thing. Thing. It was was easy to do. Mac and cheese in a cone. Um, make sure you go to the right spot if you want free water because yeah. not all the spots have water in them Dying so you have to like have to ask and go to the right one which is kind of frustrating uh, but overall mm-hmm. and they have inter- they have ever changing menus it seems like they always have something new coming which means mm-hmm. you might go one week and this is great you might go another week it's not so the mac and cheese may be gone when you go the corn might be gone but whatever is there is probably still pretty good mm-hmm. So we also ate at two different places for breakfast, and we're not going to cover Starbucks. This Starbucks is Starbucks is Starbucks, but we ate at the two. This is Starbucks. Starbucks. <laughs> it is. Uh, we ate at the two breakfast locations at, at the Disneyland Hotel and the Grand Californian. The Disneyland Hotel's uh, breakfast option, besides the little coffee place, is called Tangora Terrace. Um, we did not like that area we did not like the food we yeah, yeah it, was, it, it does not open early enough for uh extra magic hours which it should flex for that because if you need to be at a location at 7 a.m yeah it should be opening up before 7 yeah. a.m uh the grand californian place it had a little bit different menu and we actually did um i forgot the name of it but it was it was better um but your typical disney breakfast fair that you'll get everywhere else um, it took a little while to get the food too. yeah which again, they had just opened. Opened, yeah. But when you're trying to make rope drop, mm-hmm. I, I almost feel like just don't open at all that early if it's going to be. I'm expecting to be able to get breakfast mm-hmm. there, and I wait 20 minutes to get the breakfast, and I'm yeah. One it, of us has to go get in line because it's yeah. like we were trying to get through. Yeah. Um, but Starbucks was always open early enough. Yeah. So we ended and, up getting Starbucks by the like the rest of the week because we ate there once, like Monday and once Tuesday. Yeah. And and, then, and you're having to walk past if you're staying at the Disney Hotel, you have to walk past it to go through Disney, uh, mm-hmm. downtown Disney or whatever. Yeah. So it was just easier. Yes, our breakfast was easier. So no Mickey waffles there, but hey, <laughs> no Mickey. You don't need it every morning. Nope. So that's like the main uh, restaurants we ate at. But we're gonna dive into a couple more food specific things that just we had. Just the items, yeah. in particular like and treats. Because we had a lot like of that. treats and specialized food there, which Disneyland is very much known for. Oh, and and just to say this, as part of our review. Try a lot of different things. Mm-hmm. We got a cozy cone mac and cheese to right. share. We got popcorn to share. Mm-hmm. We got these treats to share. Like red apple. Um, a lot of different things we got. Mm-hmm. We were able to eat multiple times over the day and get different things because we shared the one item. Yeah. Don't go in and be like, we got to get four sandwiches for a family of four. Get two sandwiches and then eat again a little yeah. later because you can try something else or whatever the case may be. And we always typically sp- split breakfast when we ate right. um, at the hotels. We typically got the egg bites from Starbucks each yeah. ourselves. Um, so driving into the food, um, one of the treats we got was the Tigger Tail, which um, I have a great picture of like me trying to see if I can get it to have like line it with Tigger's arms. I'll see if I can <laughs> insert that. If not, definitely watch the... Um, video, I think it's like our when we fifth meet day. Greet, yeah. No, it was, it was the day after that. Yeah, meet and greet with Pooh. Um, but the Tigger Tail looks really pretty. They also have the Cheshire Cat Tail. But basically, it's marshmallow, and it looks like it's, it's covered in sugar. It's marshmallows it's something with more. white chocolate, with caramel on top of that, with orange sugar, with chocolate um, like drizzle. syrup uh, drizzle yeah. on top. Make it look like a tail. Um, if you didn't notice... I still have all my teeth because we did not finish it. Because if we had finished it, we might have yeah. lost all our teeth with all those cavities. It, it is sugar. It is pure sugar. And it'll be a great treat for like four plus people to share. I think it's three or four marshmallows. So yeah, you can basically like take really a bite long. and the next person can take a bite. Next person. And be done with it. It was, it's a, it's a great Instagram picture taking yeah. thing. It's a great it visual to walk around with. But you don't need to have more than one. If you got kids, not telling you how to raise your kids. But no one else is going to want to be around your kids if they have one of those by themselves because yeah. they are going to be jumping off the wall. And it's chewy. But like, what does Tigger do? He bounces. So you might be bouncing after yeah. that. So uh, We also had, um, we went to the Holly Jolly Bakery in each ad, got a snack when uh, like late morning as well as coffee. We stopped and got some Starbucks. <sighs> so good. Anyway, It go was ahead. so good. I got the uh, macaroon. It was uh, strawberry and lemon and you got the... The whoopie pie. Yeah. It was awesome. It was like one of the best 
stop off like treats of like the late morning that we probably had and I'm not a like a big fan of uh, macaroons or macar- it's macaroons yeah, that's um, but that was it was really good it was the, moist because typically they can be very dry and everything looked pretty it was, it was very a pretty. mini style shape mm-hmm. that had the ears and it, it was, was pink it, it was nail pink yeah it was dusted with you know things mine just looked good because it was a big giant whoopie pie. Mm-hmm. We're also eating it right around the hub. We were eating it after we had been hustle bustle for the morning hours. Yeah, we were over at DC. But there were still people coming in to the parks. You could just see people walking in, the Main mm-hmm. Street vehicles going around. And it's Holly Jolly Bakery. I mean, you don't get that at the world. So it was it was really stop by and do that for sure. Yeah. We also had a very special Disneyland treat of the beignets. We did not have it at uh, New Orleans restaurant, or I forget what it's called there. I can't remember. But we went to the Mint Julep Cafe, which has an outdoor order, order area. It's a quick service. They have lunch there, but you can also get it at the Mint Julep Bar, um, a Mint Julep non-alcoholic, and beignets. And the special beignets of that time was like a strawberry beignet. So we got regular, and we got strawberry, and you know, we have video of us eating yeah. that and talking about it, but um, the regular, <laughs> yeah, the, 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 the regular beignets were good, but they were yeah. plain because they're plain mm-hmm. beignets. The strawberry ones were great because they had a flavor profile mm-hmm. that added to yeah. the powdered sugar. It wasn't just powdered sugar; yeah. it was kind of a, had a bite to it. There was some not spice, but there was like flavor. There was yeah. something to and a bite because it yeah. had like crystallized sugar on yeah, it, it was, as well. But that, I mean, and the mint julep. Was traditional. Great. It was great. And it was, was non-alcoholic, but still very nice. Well, and, and my thought process on that is, mint juleps are refreshing, but with the alcohol in it, you're not thinking about it. But if you're in a hot day, it's going to dehydrate you. These don't have alcohol in them, so they're not just tasting refreshing. They actually are refreshing. They mm-hmm. actually do replenish your, you know, your liquids and stuff. It's actually better for you in that case. Now, it was actually very nice. I actually you, thoroughly enjoyed that. You, drink. you might you might want to get some booze or whatever when you're at the parks. I'm sorry, yeah. Disneyland, you're not going to be able to. At least not now, um, but don't don't let that deter you from a mint julep because it was still really good. It was good. very very nice, and we got a great seat overlooking um, the water. And of course, people were walking by us. We got to see the boat go by. It was just a great little yep. like break once again over in the New Orleans area, and that's actually one of the reasons that that we liked it. But you do have to kind of like walk through New Orleans. There's also like. It, it's like like we said, New Orleans is a little bit hard area to navigate because it, you, you, you don't know if it's open or not sometimes. Be be okay asking where something yeah. is in that area. That area and is just a little confusing. In the right direction. It's just a little more confusing than everything else. And mm-hmm. I think they know that. I think yeah. they're aware because it's it's just smaller and more compacted, which means it's harder to mm-hmm. find stuff. Yeah. So another treat we got was Maurice's um, garlic cheese twist at um, Maurice's uh, Treats which is over where like the princess is and the princess show is in yep. fantasy land. Um, along with that, we got the, what I would call the fused brew. I thought both of those were okay. Yeah. They weren't like, Oh, I'm going to go back and get that again. I thought the cheese garlic twist was just a cheese garlic twist. I thought the frozen drink would have, is, was nice on a hot day. It was, it was fine. We took it towards Toontown. Yeah. And we said Toontown is oppressively hot. Mm-hmm. That iced drink was great. Yeah. There's something um, different. It does have a different taste. The the twist wasn't too filling. It's bread, yeah. but it wasn't like it wasn't a I mean, it wasn't a pretzel. A pretzel yeah. is gonna be way more filling, I think, faster. This was a little bit less than that. So mm-hmm. but it was still good. It had good flavor. So and again it's it's a it's a hand holding item. You can just eat it while you're walking, which is yeah. nice. But again, nothing to go crazy for. Mm-hmm. But if you're there, there's no line. I mean, it was right, right. it was good. And they have a second choice there. The there's the cheese twist, and there's a different like. Oh piece, yeah, yeah. Is that pizza flavor. Maybe I, I might have like bacon or pepperoni yeah. with it. Now, so much of Lafuse Brew, they also have a red apple freeze that you can also get at Cozy Cone. Um, I found both of those very similar, very refreshing on a hot day. So great for like midday, yeah. after midday. Um, once again. Frozen apple juice smoothie, yeah, basically. Yeah. Uh, another thing we got at, um, we'll just talk about all the cozy cookies. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So one of my favorite things in the world is actually elote, which is Mexican street corn. Um, I hate eating corn on the cob because it gets stuck in your teeth, but of course, 
through the magic of Disney. They make sure it comes in a cup with all the toppings and I actually really enjoyed that. It popped up as coming out while we were there so we actually made a special trip back into Radiator Springs to get that elote and when I got elote, Eric got... I got popcorn and I think flavor. I got garlic parmesan or something or yeah. some, some... I can't remember which flavor mm -hmm. it was at this point. It's in the video I think we talk about it. Yeah. But it was pretty it good. Was good. Yeah. It was good popcorn. And a great I, treat. And it it felt like a great walk around the park while you're munching on it thing. I didn't mm -hmm. get a special tea bucket or anything else because yeah. we didn't want to do that. But it was good. It was fun. Mm -hmm. And I probably would, next time I would get it, I would probably just get traditional butter popcorn. But I want to try something yeah, else. Something a little bit different because um, we get butter popcorn movies all the time. But I think, but yeah, it was, it was fun. And the mm -hmm. other thing we got there was... Uh, we got the mac and cheese, or the bacon mac and cheese in the uh, like bread cone, basically. The, the hand cone, how, yeah. what do they call it? it was, it's it's really hand cone, yeah. but it's like breaded so you can eat the yeah. thing you're holding it in. It was, that's a little hard to do yeah. because it's shaped like a cone. Mm -hmm. So at the beginning, it's very wide with all the fixings all on the top. Mm -hmm. You kind of need a fork or something to eat it. And it's made by twisting the bread. Yeah. So when you start pulling on the bread, the whole thing just starts unraveling. Rattling. So you need to like tear it off. If you're you also need to bread. eat it a little bit farther down before yeah. you start. It's so, off. yeah. But we actually enjoyed it. It wasn't messy. Like it I was, think you need to sit down and eat it. Agree. You don't need to be walking around trying to do those right. uh, multiple tasks at once. Um, but it, it was good. I am not a big fan of um, mac and I like mac and cheese, but I'm not like ordering it out or anything because right. it could taste either too cheesy or too fake cheese. And I actually enjoyed this, which yeah. is, uh, I, I found surprising for myself. Uh, but the piece of resistance within Disneyland and DCA, of course, is the churros. So churros are everywhere. You can mm -hmm. get churros in a thousand different flavors, a thousand different yes. ways, depending on which part you go sauces. to. Um, we got traditional churros once, mm -hmm. which were great. Yeah. We got the carrot. Cake. Cake. Mm -hmm. Carrot cake churros, which were carrot cake churros. I enjoyed that one. They were fine. I yeah. just, I would have preferred a different flavor if I yeah. was choosing my churro flavor. I would not have chosen carrot cake. But they're great. They're a staple. Mm -hmm. Again, that's one. You get one churro. You walk around with your family. You all get some bites. You're not spending too much money for it. You're eating it. You're getting the traditional, hey, we're mm -hmm. having churros. But you don't need to get five of them. Because no. you're going to get tired of the flavor after a little while anyway. Yeah. But it's worth having at least one. Yeah, exactly. And I want to say we got another flavor, but <clears throat> honestly, I mean, we we ate a lot of different snacks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's It's probably the video I mean, if we see. talked about it, but I, I really can't remember. But churros are good. And they, have, and they have all sorts of churros coming out at different times yeah. throughout the year. So so we've talked about kind of the treats, covered the locations. We're going to talk about more of the dining packages that we mm -hmm. experienced. We experienced some of the dining packages, mm -hmm. and we're going to talk about, we're just going to go through the list. We're not going to do it best or worst or anything else, but we're going to talk about which ones we kind of liked and why as we go. Mm -hmm. So the first one we did was our first evening, which was we ate at the Blue Bayou mm -hmm. Fantasmic Package. So just kind of go through that really quickly. Yeah. How do we go in? Where was, you know, what did that happen? So the Blue Bayou is over in New Orleans Square. It is kind of tucked away. It's like two doors that open into the restaurant. So, you know, you'll have to wind your way and get to it. You walk in, you check in. It's very normal to see you check in. They're going to call you typically within the 15 minutes to let right. you know that your table's ready. Um, it is the restaurant that overlooks the Pirates of the Caribbean ride. And since this was the last day that it was open, um, it was really nice to eat there while it was open. And, and just so you're aware, when we say overlooks the ride, it's the very beginning, beginning of the ride. Of the, when as you're, you're starting you're out in the, the bayou. Boat, you're in the bayou. Mm -hmm. You barely see anything that's right. pirates. It's just you have the feel There's of the, the water. Noise. You have the slow roll of the, mm -hmm. the water sounds and the people going by. Yeah. But it's it feels neat because you're there. Yeah, it's, it's not so, like you're hearing like pirates and whatever. There's no else. shooting not, noises whatsoever. It's a little bit of a misnomer to be like, oh, it's overlooking pirates. Well, yeah. it's overlooking a boat ride. It's, it's like Grand Fiesta Tour yeah. with uh, San Angel and Hell uh, in yeah. San Angel. Um, it's more like Pinocchio Village House overlooking Small World. Or, yeah, that yeah. too. You know, you but it's, it's much more high end than that, obviously. Yeah. 
So, yeah, so the Fantastic Dining Package, you get right. a prefix meal, mm -hmm. which means a very small amount of choices you can get for right. it. So. so I did the typical, I think I did gumbo first. I did the surf and turf second and the creme brulee for my dessert. They don't have any alcohol there, which it, it made no sense they had no alcohol. I know it's Disneyland, it's Wolf. It, it only makes drink. sense because they've chosen for that to be the case. Um, right. As far as a patron, you might want it i wanted but a glass of wine with that meal but that's just the way it is and you mm -hmm. can't really you can't go to disney and complain about disney's ideas i guess right. if you're gonna go you gotta deal with that was what they did i remember going pictures. where's the wine list and i'm like oh this is disneyland and we don't serve wine i'm like what yeah i was aware of that ahead of time but that, i didn't let you know that. i thought but, that we wine in the restaurants yeah which there are at disney world no um, yeah and i think this may change at disneyland but yeah. i chose a full shrimp which was head-on shrimp yeah you had the upgrade um which i sh should not have chosen yeah i should not have chosen it i it thought about small. it i didn't it cost more because it wasn't a part of the mm -hmm. regular version of the menu i also had the surf and turf didn't i yeah i think i did no I maybe you I just got a steak got the steak i should have chosen the surf and turf mm -hmm. um and i got the, the multiple here. layer cake, almond, yeah. chocolate cake, it was okay. So the meal overall, I think, was... Very expensive. Very expensive. Disney Disney prices, okay. And it's a dining package as well. Right, so you get to, you're paying for a lot of different things, I feel like. I think overall, nothing we're at home about. I can make that same exact meal. I probably would have made gumbo, but like appetizer, I do make right. surf and turf at home. Creme brulee is my favorite dessert of all time. Um... Like, but there's nothing to write home about. Yeah. It, was, it was a nice meal. Remember, I was, you know, getting a dining package for this. So, of course, with your dining package, you um, get little seat cushions to sit on. Like, you would take to a football game, right? Not even that high of a quality, really. Yeah. Lower quality than that. Like but really little, pretty. Yeah. These were, like, material. We did not bring them home. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't worth um, When we got them, we were like, oh, we're excited. These are neat. Yeah. But then you realized, oh. That's what you're sitting on. That's it. Um, so this is so the, the dinner itself, I would not have paid the price just for the dinner at all. Yeah. It was way too expensive for just the dinner. Mm -hmm. The fact that it was a prefix menu means we couldn't get anything I actually wanted on the menu. I had to mm -hmm. get stuck with some of the things. Probably would have liked to have just paid the same amount of money for different choices. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the menu meal by itself. The fantastic side of it, we did have centered mm -hmm. seating. We were centered. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You get centered seating. But this is not stadium seating. This is not bleachers. This is on the floor. And it's where the, it's literally the walkway that people use during the day. Mm -hmm. They rope it off and now you sit on it. There mm -hmm. is a wrought iron um, fencing that obviously keeps you from yeah. getting the, in the water. But you're sitting on the floor. And for someone of Diane's height. I'm you, sitting on an extra pillow right you, now. Basically, to be this his is. Size. This is where the fence went to, and this is where her eyes were. That's the, that's pretty much what she was seeing. I saw this. Yeah, I mean, like this. I mean, this is it was above her eyes, so yeah. she saw fencing all yeah. the way down from there. I the cushions were required because you were on the on the ground for what needed. was almost an hour. They were definitely hour. needed. Yeah, it was almost an hour. We got there early. We were still in the second row. We were in the second row. It would not have made a difference. We um, saw the show. It when they said seating, I never would have imagined it would have been on the floor. Now I could have done more research and would have yeah, known I, it was on the floor. I went back and looked at the thing and I'm like, it did not say on the ground. It says seating though. Yeah. And I'll just say we were not pleased with it because it was that not what we expected. That package is not worth it. The food wasn't worth the price. The price additionally, so basically, what I would have paid for the food, I wouldn't have paid the difference for the seating that I got. Right. If I would ever do it again, I would have gotten a fast pass for it, been a little bit further back, a little bit off centered, mm -hmm. and got there right before the show started and just get in the fast pass area in the back. I wouldn't have waited. I think an I would have had a better view standing up. Right. I wouldn't have waited an hour mm -hmm. sitting on the floor waiting for it to start. Yeah. And also still not gotten a good view anyway. Right. Um, so that's, yeah, that's. The show? I can't really give you a full and accurate, detailed review. I really, show. I think the show's great. It's fantastic. It's in Disneyland. The boat scenes are amazing because those they're like, actually on the Mark Twain, the Columbia. You're so close to them, being where we were at. They right. were amazing. I felt so immersed right. in those two. 
The rest of the show, however, I did not feel because I had such an obscure view. Yeah. Like either I would and, have to stand and up don't straight forget or... that she's not an eight or seven year old kid who was right. going to be shorter and smaller and not able to see. That's impossible for a small child to see anything. Right. Um, it's it was disappointing to say the least. But mm -hmm. I'm so glad that we did it because I feel like I can say I saw it there. That's true. Um, Don't know. I, though it wasn't Fantasmic originated at Hollywood Studios? No. Was it there? Yeah. Anyway, we actually um, contacted Disneyland after our experience. And after a month of wrangling with them, they did um, get in contact with Disney World and are giving us fast passes for the Disney World Fantasmic. When we, when we go in the future, we're going to be able to see it there. Mm -hmm. I I think that makes I think that will make it right. I think we'll yeah. I mean, once we because we were going to purchase a dining package if, there. If it all works out, I think we'll be fine. Mm -hmm. I think you should try to see Fantasmic if you're going to Disneyland and you've never seen Fantasmic. But don't if do you've seen Fantasmic at Disney World, don't worry about it. But regardless of either of those things, mm -hmm. don't pay for a dining package. Just go see it. Just go yeah. go later in the time. Stand up. Mm -hmm. It's only a 15, 20 minute show anyway. Yeah. It yeah, you're not gonna get centered so, seating, but it's not it's not worth it. The, the best part of Fantasmic dining package is that once Fantasmic is over, you stand up and you move toward the railing and you watch the fireworks from the backside of the castle, and they have the projections on the where, water. Well, where Fantasmic yeah, was where the, that the area. water, of the fountains, they had the, the and that was there. a great way to see yeah. the fireworks. I honestly like that was the best part of Fantasmic. That was probably more worth it than yeah everything else but that was not part of the package that was that, just was, in, that was incidental because yeah. technically anyone could walk up to where you were at at that point yes anyone could but we were already at the front because we exactly. were there that's why mm -hmm. we got the front for that mm -hmm. they, they basically take the ropes out and then that's just mm -hmm. fireworks view and you can go wherever you want to do yeah. um so yeah so that's the blue bayou dining fantastic dining package that's a thumbs down for us yeah so the next dining package we did was the carthay circle paint the night parade dining package now the paint the night package does have i think two different restaurants just like fantastic also has two different restaurants. hungry bear i think is one well of them. hungry bear is like a to-go meal but it's still part you, you still get it yeah, you can yeah. eat at some other location yeah. in uh disneyland as right. well so we chose carthay circle because it's very nostalgic um it's, we were going to eat there once anyway right it, the it's the premier dining right. i think with actually between both parks it's the yeah. premier dining in the parks yeah right so Obviously, we get a pre fee um, menu, which was okay. Again, when they're telling you the choices yeah. you can make, if you don't see anything on the menu that you really want, you're kind of screwed. Yeah. We are very much a steak and potatoes thing, and our steak came with beans, like edamame. I, I mean, it was, it was, it, it was everything different. that we ate was, was good. De decent and good yeah. food. The quality was good. Everything was, it was cooked well. Everything about it. The, the, it's just, we wanted something different. It's just, I just didn't want that that night. It was like, I would rather have had just and, a steak or whatever else. And it just didn't. Yeah. The only thing I can truly fault on that meal is that it does not come with the bread that Carthay Circle is known for, which is like the cheese bite things with yeah, the apricot right. butter. We actually ordered those for like $17.99. Whoa. Um, and they were not good. They were not worth that at all. They were not worth it. Um, to us. Yeah. The flavor profile was just not our, our no, choice. Not our choice. And so, um, overall, so, so, yeah. we, we want to go back to Carthay Circle. To try it as to, what we want to, to order ourselves. what we yeah. want to order, to actually yep. drink more, because they have a great uh, drink selection there. We also probably would have been able to be seated, not where we were seated. We could have gotten one of the side rooms, maybe. Or yeah. Else. We didn't, I didn't feel like our seating was that great because we had to schedule it so early in the evening yeah. because we wanted to get the package exactly at five o'clock but, but the, again. again the restaurant the food the price we paid i almost felt like it was it was close to worth the price for the food even though we didn't yeah. like the food we as had, much it was really like good three, food we had like four courses yeah for that it one. was really we would have spent that much probably yeah the quality yeah. of the food was fantastic it just wasn't yeah. what we chose what we wanted to eat that night Mm -hmm. But I cannot fault the f that, and that's why we think the menu, if we were able to choose from the menu, yeah. would have been spectacular. Yeah. Um, so that's that's that part of it. Now, what do you think about the actual? So separating the food out, how was mm -hmm. the package as far as the seating seat. and the paint so the, the night paint the night um, seating was 
amazing. So hey, we were in seats for this. Yeah, we were in director's chairs. We were in there seats. Were in seating. <laughs> there were two different uh, heights for the director's chairs. Uh, first row had like you know regular seat level, and then the second level had actual director seats that were higher up. Um, and they said Carthay Circle dining package, yeah, and, and paint night or something like that. You have you have the Carthay Circle that comes. So you've got. I don't know. You're not going to tell what I'm talking about. But when you enter the it's parks, the you see down the road, that is where the parade comes towards you, basically, the entering the parks. And you go left, and Carthay Circle's at that corner where mm -hmm. it, come, it would come towards you at the entrance of the park and then go left. So we were seated basically right at the entrance of Carthay Circle, mm -hmm. and the, the parade was going to come our left, come down, and turn the corner, and then be in front of us going, toward, going mm -hmm. to our right. There was no obstruction. We were yeah. on the, the sidewalk. We were yeah. in director's chairs. We were in the front row of the director's chairs. The second row of the director's chairs were still going to be high enough to not block yeah. by anything, unless you might have been wearing those and been <laughs> about a foot taller. But even then, you're seeing the whole thing. Yeah. And because you're at that corner, it slows down a little bit. So you yeah, see it because they had to longer. come around. It, and they also had a walking path near us, so they always try to stop the parade. So we got the full view, like it coming it really coming slow, toward us, passing it's, by it turns. us. And that parade. Disney needs to step up its game. Like, I'm pretty sure... about Disney World? Disney World, yeah. yes. I was um, like, Disneyland, they I'm did. That sure was great, yeah. The, the party nights, like for Halloween and Christmas, I'm sure, pretty sure those parades are really awesome. We're seeing them this year. But that that parade was spectacular. It was... It was The music, the lights. I mean, you get teary-eyed just by looking at it and going, Like we watched That's it amazing. yesterday with our niece. It's just amazing. Again. The music's good. The interactions, because we're sitting in chairs and right there yeah. we're not on the ground right so when they walk past they the don't have to bend they like, can be like hey, hey yeah. they don't have to like bend over and, mm -hmm. and with all the equipment they have on all the lights they and stuff they can't really do that so like we were getting interactions mm -hmm. that other people aren't able to get that are on the parade yeah. route um the chairs were comfortable agreed um, they didn't have any problem i mean overall that was i think and, and i'm gonna be honest with you i would have paid almost the price of the package just to sit in those seats. Mm -hmm. No food at all. Agreed. No food. Just just the seats. Mm -hmm. Because... Is that going to a concert at that point? I have experienced that parade at the epitome that parade could be experienced at, I believe. Mm -hmm. I would like to see the parade again. I love the parade. I think doing it my first time with the best possible way of seeing it mm -hmm. makes that parade so memorable mm -hmm. that it was worth the extra cost. Right. Because if I had, if, okay, let's, let's say it a different way. We hadn't paid for it. We had done other things. We've had to and wait. we had had to like wait two hours. Yeah. Might not have picked the right corner to sit at or been yeah. whatever because we didn't know what the parade route was really going to be. Mm -hmm. All those different things. It goes by and as soon as it starts going by, the person that's next to us has a kid that they put up on the shoulders and they start bumping you. Whatever it is, the experience we had was literally the perfect experience for that parade. Awesome. And I would pay whatever it takes because I'm only dis at Disneyland once. I'm only right. going to see the parade We're not potentially going back once. For a while. It's worth it to us mm -hmm. for that. Which that's the problem with these packages. We had one package we just talked about that was no, oh, no, and this package which was a a hundred percent yes. Yeah, we were a little bit worried. It's it's just yeah. it's hard to tell, and you have and, and that's we watch a lot of these different you know vlogs mm -hmm. and stuff. People talk about them. You really you have to have other people's experiences to kind of add Thank to you. it. And this um, was so new, we didn't. There was not like that much out there for this parade package. But right. the music was great, the lights were great, the interaction was great. It is very similar to what was called the Electrical Night Parade. Yeah. Uh, I think that's Seoul, at Shanghai, or Tokyo, or Hong Kong. One of those. And that's where it got retired to. But this is, I think, infinitely more better. And I'm gonna I'm gonna say this this little bit of a spoiler. Parade packages are worth it fireworks and show packages are not yeah now that could be depending on which one you're talking about or anything else but mm -hmm. overall a parade package is more worth it for us mm -hmm. than a fireworks show because a fireworks show you can you get, can get a decent angle. spot yeah. no matter what time you try to figure it out mm -hmm. you're not going to get front row if you don't have a package or yeah. you spend we tried to get it. you know the pixar parade which is over in disneyland we tried there's just no way we ended up scheduling a package so, because so we yeah so that's it. That's part of the circle package. Yeah. That's that. So let's talk about the next package that we Yeah, did. so we actually tried to view the Pixar Parade on Monday. And then, again, was, maybe Tuesday. We were four people or five people deep. When we, tried we, just go, we, we kept moving areas. It. And it, 
I felt like I was being surrounded. It was claustrophobic. It, yeah, it was. Yeah. And I'm not claustrophobic. I just felt completely like I, there was no breathing room. And yeah. I hopped on to the my Disney Experience app for Disneyland, and was able to book the Pixar Play Parade dining package, which is located at the Plaza Inn. Um, Plaza Inn. Uh, well, the food you eat at the Plaza Inn, but you sit yeah. over by Holly Jolly. Yeah, the side of yeah. It. But yeah, yeah. Anyway, it's it's Plaza Inn food. Um, it was lunch. And the food was okay. They have like a pre fee thing, and I wish I actually subbed it out because they had. Um, it was like fried, fried chicken, chicken and potatoes and that you know and whatever. Watermelon salad. Yeah. Um, yeah. The one thing we're going to talk about in treats is the Pixar cake they have oh right yeah now, the Pixar cake. We, which yeah. you can get at the plaza and i actually went back and purchased that um you can also get it at the pacific wharf he actually got it for me yeah. while he was at it's, the cafe he, uh, he walked out because i wanted that and i'm like you found it and i found it again i was so excited was it it's like a lemon blueberry strawberry or lemon blueberry cherry i think it's a lemon red velvet yeah. and like vanilla yeah it's it's red yeah. blue and yellow yeah so it's, it's like kind of got yeah the pixar color. colors it's good. and it is so so good at the middle of the plaza and fried chicken was decent everything else is okay yeah um once again we were going for the best seats in the house and now honestly we did have time that day to go it was our last day it was our we, last were day, tired. So we were tired so we sat around a lot so we actually went to the area before they even roped it off yeah they were t telling us oh you know you can't sit here we're like we, we had our lanyards like, 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 and they were yeah. like oh you're basically we're like oh man they're here early then yeah we just needed to sit we yeah. didn't realize like we were going to be in that situation had we known that we might not have did the dining package but we had some awesome seats. We sat beside a Canadian couple with kids, which forced a lot of interaction because yeah, the characters came over to the girl girls a that lot were there because that's you know yeah we were in a specialized area with kids, so we had a lot of character interaction from that parade. Again, yeah. the the location of it was at you could see the hub to your left, and they mm -hmm. would come. Of, of if you're facing the hub, they came around the right side of the hub mm -hmm. to you, and then came straight down. Coming straight so down. you got a turn. A straightaway and then pass you down Main mm -hmm. Street. So any any of the corners in the turns, you're gonna get more time, more interactions, yeah. more visuals because of the way that right, you right. see you can all see the stuff. them coming. So we actually really really enjoyed that parade as well as a daytime parade. So it's a kid's silly parade. It, and it was a, a lot of fun. Yeah, it the music is cool. Um, the the floats are uh, very well themed, imagined by Disney art. Our parade did not include the Incredibles float, um, but we saw it in a previous parade. Um, so I thought it's, overall, it's, I think a lot nice. of that's interchangeable. If they have issues with yeah. the floats or the characters or anything mm -hmm. else, we did miss that. That would have been nice to see. But overall, a lot of fun, mm -hmm. very jazzy and fun and exciting. And it was our last thing we did before we exited the park. It was a great way to end it. Which it left us on a happy note because yes. we were like, yeah, picture yeah. play, da da like, play three, yeah, four, no. three and, yeah. two. And then we left. Yeah. So it was, it wasn't like, oh, this is our last ride. This is our last this. This is yeah. our last this. It was, we sat down, we waited for the parade. We saw yeah. the parade and then we just followed the parade out. out. We like yeah. walked behind the parade as mm -hmm. we left, kept hearing the music as we were leaving. And mm -hmm. it was the right way to leave because it was exactly. on a high note. It um, was. So that's sort of the dining packages. We have a show that we did see that we want to talk about. So what was the show that we saw? That was Mickey and the Magician Show, which no. oh yes, Mickey and the Magical Magical Map. Map. Sorry, Mich Mickey and the Magician is the one in Disneyland Paris, I which we have not seen which... or been to. But Mickey, Mickey and the Magical Map. Yes, Mickey and the Magical Map. We tried to see this on our first day because it's only on the weekends. That's probably one thing I will fault Disneyland for is that Fantasmic, Mickey and the Magical Map, There's... were only on the like yeah. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Like I get like, big productions what? being on more. You know, more people time or anything yeah. else, but it was like it Disney, made it very hard to schedule. Well, the thing about Disney World is you're at Disney World for a, at a minimum of a week usually. That's yeah. how people they plan. have a lot of weekenders. Disneyland, there. you plan it for a few days because it's only two parks. Mm -hmm. Well, if you plan it for the middle of the week, you just don't get to yeah, see. Yeah, you don't get things. to see. The, you don't get to see. So we went there for the one o'clock showing, and it broke. Like it didn't. It was not starting. It, we spent so. about twenty minutes waiting yeah. for it. Ten minutes. Until we figured out that it was broken, not right. going to happen. Mm -hmm. So that kind of was a bummer. But then yeah. it happens. It just was the the problem with it wasn't that we it broke. Scheduled that out. The problem was that it broke. And we only had that one day we could do it. Right, right. Um, so we were actually did it on a whim again. We were 
coming on the train and we were coming around to literally the stop right beside it and they're like oh and you know mickey and the magical map is going to be on in 20 minutes and we're like well why not and so we actually just jumped off the train and went to it and i'm very happy we did yep. it is a great show um i can't really compare it to anything in the world we don't um, really see any shows in the in Yeah, the world. but it's so um, it's a good show. Like it's, it's interactive, it's got dancing, yeah. it's got bubbles. Bubble. Yeah. yeah. So, Anything's got bubbles would be great, right? Bubble snow uh, over there. Singing, live singing, yes. not just tape singing. Mm -hmm. Did have tape singing, but it had live singing. Yeah, and it had great um, like a good theme throughout it. It had secondary characters, which if you're not, you know, okay mm -hmm. with that, that's part of it had uh, a little bit of spoilers. It had Mickey, of course. Mm -hmm. um, it had I'm trying to go through the order that it was in Pocahontas, Rapunzel, Rapunzel Mulan, mm -hmm. King Louie, Sebastian, yeah. Stitch, mm -hmm. Tiana. See, it's about I think that was that's all right order, yeah. Um, again, it didn't have Ariel, it had Sebastian. It didn't right. have Baloo, it had King Louie. It had Pocahontas. Oh, it also had Flynn Rider. Rapunzel, yeah. Flynn Rider, and Mulan. But and it didn't really have pretty. Cinderella or Snow White or any yeah. of those kinds. Um, it had Stitch, but it didn't, you know. But it, mm -hmm. but it all flowed well. It made it sense. Oh. It was yeah. pretty to look at. The screens and stuff mm -hmm. that it used was good. I thought overall it was a really good show, and I think it's actually I must do it at Disneyland. So I, I think it's worth it. I think hopefully it's going to work when you're there. Sit down about 15 mm -hmm. minutes ahead of time. Try to get an unobstructed view yeah. if you can. If not, just kind of turn your head and see it. It's not that bad. There's a lot of If it had on. a fast pass area, that would be nice. Yeah, but I think that because they do they it have... so few times, though, I think yeah. it's kind of a waste for them to have a secondary. Yeah. They could maybe do fast passes on certain shows. Yeah. And that would help. Um, and also, that would add another thing um, for Disneyland to have a fast pass, and, which they're trying to do that right. more so. That was probably the only thing um, I would say, like overall, Disneyland needs to add more fast passes yeah. than they've added two more rides at least since we've been there with so, classes. So that's kind of the shows that we did. That's mm -hmm. sort of that. So why don't we talk about, why don't we, why don't we leave the parks and talk mm -hmm. about just downtown Disney a little bit very quickly. Well, also shopping in general. Well, I, I want to talk about that and then we'll talk about the shopping after it because oh, shopping is a lot of downtown Disney, but mm -hmm. basically everything that we were going to ever buy was going to be in Disneyland also. Yeah. Like I know they're shopping outside, but we yeah. didn't care. So downtown Disney at. compared to Disney Springs, downtown Disney is mainly restaurants. And it has a couple of Disney shops and a few other shops outside of that. It is not um, this big shopping area that you see at Disney Springs over at the World. It is very much food centric. And then it has some Disney shops and then it has very few outside shops throughout it. I mean, there's, there's, a, there's a few and you might you know, you can get shoes or some Yeah, I bought a pair of sandals. But, much but they know the apparel is going to be Disney related that you're going to want to buy. So they're not really mm -hmm. selling that much stuff there. Um, it's more of a hangout spot. They have live music, those kind of things. Mm -hmm. So the locals will go to the movie theater, some of the restaurants, mm -hmm. or Disneyland. They're not going to go there just to go there. I think in Orlando, more people would just go to Disney Springs, go to Disney Springs, and then leave. Mm -hmm. But that's not really the same way. Right, right. So I think a lot of us, because it's so close to Disneyland, you're like, well, right. if I'm already here, I might as well go in the parks as well. Right. Disney World, you have to make an effort to go to the parks after going to Disney Springs. Or and vice versa. Yeah. So Disney, uh, downtown Disney, we did not spend a lot of time in so literally walking through it. You always have to go through it and back mm -hmm. through it if you're at the Disneyland Hotel because yeah. it's on the opposite side of it. Um, we, we actually, we, I don't think we bought anything besides by sandals and I bought Starbucks. a couple of things from the, the puzzle that I got. I got a couple of things from the, the Disney store. Oh, is that where we bought that? Okay. Yeah. Because yeah, that was just easy to get something. They are, the uh, stuff, like but. every World of Disney, they are redoing it. I'm unsure if that one has opened up yet. Like yeah, I think it's pretty much done. Disney Springs. Um but very it was different. fun. It was just the fact that they had the music going, mm -hmm. the fact that they had like Tokyo. You see me dancing a lot in the morning. Yeah, it was it was good, and yeah. we also went through it when most of the stuff was closed every morning. Exactly, and which, then we were very tired at night. And at night, we were not about to stop and watch a, somebody sing a song for twenty mm -hmm. minutes when we were already like our legs are hurting, our feet are tired, those kind of things. Yeah. So we didn't experience it like you probably could, but I don't think you really need to. I don't think it's a not destination. There. I think this is And they've actually knocked down destination. a lot of stuff at downtown Disney yeah. to build the new hotel. Yeah, well, that's also going to be a problem for a lot of people soon. We were there before it finally got all changed out. Mm -hmm. We didn't eat there, but Earl's Sandwich was still open while we were there. Yeah, right yes. now, it's not there anymore because they're changing stuff out. Mm -hmm. So that so really quick for downtown Disney. It was okay. We can't give you a full review of it because we didn't really experience it. Right. But because we didn't experience it, our view of it is it's probably not a big deal. Right. Because we didn't feel bad about missing it. 
Exactly. But shopping. Shopping at both Disneyland and DCA was phenomenal. I actually enjoyed shopping there uh, much more than Disney World as a whole. I felt like, because everything, you know, like I said, is very much on top of one another. But they also had like the animators uh, place, which had a gift shop, which had art and right. uh, some things that I just really like seeing. Uh, they like had the high stuff. end, they had the yeah. low end. It was exactly. a, lot of, a lot of different things. Um, yeah, I just really enjoyed it. And I actually like Disneyland, like Disneyland themed merchandise much better than Disney World. I do not like the logo of Disney World. I love the logo of Disneyland. So. Yeah, I think, I don't think that it was as hustle bustle as the Emporium at Disney yeah, World is. Agreed. I think and it's a little more like spread a, out, a little bit they less. They have like these random shops in some places. Like, because right. like, not a lot of rides had the um, gift shop. Exactly, the gift shop type. So thing. you might have had to walk across the street and it'll be with other things. So my one of my favorite shops was it had ears, it had hats, and it had like sweatshirts and like one or two other shirts. And it was across from Small World. It was like a carnival kiosk type yeah. thing. It was like. And I bought like ears there. Yeah, it was and, very small, but it had exactly what I saw the want. sweatshirt that I got there, there. I didn't buy it there, but, but that's where I first yeah. saw it because it was um, out versus just tucked right. in. I think that's part of it too. Like Indiana Jones, you exit Indiana Jones, there's no mm -hmm. anything. There's no it's shopping, the there's way. no gift shop, there's no nothing. A lot of the rides are that way, mm -hmm. which centralizes the stuff you're buying yeah. a little bit better. Um, California Adventure is a little different because they kind of had mm -hmm. just about everywhere you exited, they kind of had something, but Radiator Springs didn't. You had to go yeah. to the actual shop of Radiator Springs, which makes sense, to buy stuff from Radiator Springs. You didn't yeah. get it at the ride because that's mm -hmm. not how the theming was. Right. Um, but the stuff that they had, like you said, they had a lot more ever-changing things. It was a lot more... It was more blended, um, like, because they couldn't just devote, like, one shop to every, you know, one thing. Right. So, like, the Pooh shop after the Pooh ride, um, it also led into a big stuffed animal. Um, and it was the candy shop, too. And it was a candy shop. So, it had three different things right there. And that worked well in that area because there wasn't that much going on in that area. Right. It has two rides and the Hungry Bear, and that's really about it. So that was a good place that they could have had. Space is at yeah. a premium at Disneyland, and they used it well for shopping. Mm -hmm. And if you wanted to shop, you go in a shop, and they had a lot of different stuff. If you didn't want to shop, you didn't have to go in, because they weren't attached usually, that kind yeah. of thing, too. You could avoid it if you didn't want to go in. Mm -hmm. um, pricing was fine. It was all the same pricing. Normal pricing. The disappointment for me is there was advertised items mm -hmm. that were not available. Um, with the with the Pixar, Pixar fest, fest that was going on while we were there, they advertised like a Wally hoodie and ears. ears and specific things that I was like, we're gonna be there during the Pixar fest. I'm gonna get these get things. It. And we saw online all these videos and vlogs that were like previewing the things that were gonna be during Pixar yeah. fest. They were there during Pixar fest. They mm -hmm. were not there during the duration of Pixar fest. Yeah, that's the problem. They said it'll be here during Pixar fest, but all that really meant specifically as far as marketing goes and as far as sales goes was that if it was at least available on the last day of Pixar Fest, mm -hmm. it was available during Pixar Fest. And yep. that was not made clear to us at all. Mm -hmm. And that was disappointing. It was upsetting. Because we got excited about items that we, we not going to get. Because they're parked only items as well. Right. Uh, we'd have to pay someone to buy them and ship them and all this craziness. Yeah. We're not going to do that. I just wish they would have been release dates for items. This is going to come out on, and I was just like, whatever. Because and I, and, yeah. I would, I was more upset that I thought I would get it than if I did or didn't get it. Mm -hmm. If I'd have known ahead of time, it's not available while we're there, I'd have been, oh, that stinks. Yeah. But when they say, oh, it might be, we kept when checking. When they're showing it on their Instagram. Right, we kept like, checking here, look for at this, it. And we're like, where is this? Yeah. And we kept asking for it and different things. There was a lot of stuff like that. Yeah, we checked um, Max, which is the um, store at Tour Story Mania. That is now much better that they've finished yeah. um, doing it. <laughs> But yeah, that that's yeah. something to be aware of. If you're if you're doing research, don't get disappointed about right. items that you're not gonna see because they just won't mm -hmm. be there. Sizing for that sweatshirt that you yeah, wanted was I nearly found impossible. An XL because I like my sweatshirt it's really big. I finally found it at the at the Disneyland Hotel. Hotel, the only place I could find. I, I looked at what five other places. Yeah, and they had the sweatshirts. They just didn't have the size you wanted. Yeah, I just wanted a nice big large XL um, large sweatshirt. So it was it was hit or miss with that. So yeah. so as good as the shops were, as good mm -hmm. as the the items were, the selection, the mm -hmm. I don't want to say the helpfulness of the staff. And I we think actually, was helpful, but we also didn't but, shop a lot of the Disney Disney World. We did not do right. a lot of shopping there. Um, 
it's just a little weird sometimes. Mm -hmm. They have computer systems for all these things, and we asked, do mm -hmm. you have an Excel? No one could tell us if they had an Excel, but they could because they know that stuff. Yeah. When we, we went to Disney World at one point, and we tried to get an item, we didn't have it there, so we had to call to order something. Mm -hmm. They had to call Disneyland Park Parts to, get it. to get it, so they can do that sort of thing, mm -hmm. but it was only because we literally argued with them on the phone saying, figure it out. Like, right. we know we you can do this. this. Right? And it said, it told us to call the Disney yeah, stores. We, let, me, let me just... Yeah. Really anyway, we're just completely well, talking to Disney. Well, what I'm saying is, we ordered something, they didn't really want to find it for us, but uh -huh. then they did once we told them they can, and they finally did. So they can find those things. So like the sweatshirt should have been an easy, go to the, the, the kiosk right. and say, do you have oh, this? We had an issue finding And they type it in, they type in Excel, and they say, oh, oh we don't have pins. any, or we have them. We had an issue finding like first time pens. Our uh, like buttons or badges if you're yeah. from the UK. We got those at Buzz We had to get on Buzz at Buzz Lightyear's ride. Yeah. Rather than at Great the Disneyland Hotel there. or anywhere else. Like it was crazy. Like yeah. you don't have first time visits, except for at Tomorrowland, way in the park, when you've already yeah. entered the park. Like, it didn't make any sense. Yeah. But no. it's just no. little things, but overall, I still think it was a good shopping experience. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's our Disneyland review. Before we wrap up, we do want to give a couple of shout outs because we saw a lot of vloggers there. Um, one particular vlogger we saw was uh, Bippity Bop Boppity Brook. Uh, she makes um, ears. She does pins for your Magic Band or uh, iPhone or iWatches, I should say, and a lot of other things. Uh, and we'll uh, link her down below. I will try to link her down below. If you remember. I hope I will. We also saw Ellie Stedman, who um, worked over at the UK Pavilion in Rose and Crown at Disney World. I think now she's going to go work on one of the Disney cruises. And it was so weird because our home is Disney World. That's our home. That, well, that, yeah, we're on the East Coast, so that's, right. that's our easier to get and to the And we didn't know who she was last August. We got into her after that, and we saw her and another person uh, who's in her vlogs there at Disneyland. So it's like small world. And then, of course, we saw one of your favorite bloggers or vlogging. So uh, I watched The Diz or The Diz Unplugged. Mm -hmm. um, they do a weekly podcasts and vlogs and things, mm -hmm. and they are based in Orlando, but they were in Disneyland to ride the Pirates ride before mm -hmm. it got changed over. And we met them at Disneyland, which Rhino, is crazy. Rhino. Rhino and Craig. Craig. Um, so. so, yeah, it was, that, that was crazy. Mm -hmm. One of the people that we watched in preparation for this That we didn't was, get to see, which we... Oh, was they Fresh were in Baked. Other park on Dapper Fresh Baked does uh, weekly um, videos from mm -hmm. Disneyland. So we watched a lot of those leading up to it to learn about them. the park. Mm -hmm. And we never saw them. But we saw people that were Disney World centric people yeah. at Disneyland, which is kind of funny to yeah. us. So maybe we'll, when we go to Disney World, maybe they'll maybe, go up there. Maybe they'll be there. Who knows? Um, but yeah, we had a lot of, of help watching different vlogs, which we suggest if you're watching this and mm -hmm. you've certainly if you've gotten this far, you should watch other vlogs. If you're going to exactly. be dedicated enough to watch this video all the way through, hear our thoughts on it, hear other people's thoughts as well. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people that go to Disneyland that have done it for years. Mm -hmm. This is our first time. We have advice. We have things that work for us but may not work for you. We are very much go, go, go type yeah. of people. I think you saw that at the end of the night when I'm like, um, I, I didn't. We haven't said this, but our review, and this is the last review we're going to do, uh, of Max Pass. the only thing we okay. have to say is, buy it yeah. use it and abuse it yes. run your battery dead on your phone mm -hmm. it is it is a part of your ticket price or should be if you're budgeting for this place and you can't afford 10 extra dollars a day don't go because it should be a part of your budget bring food into the park yeah if, if you have to do that you cannot have you will there. not have as good a day if exactly. you don't use max pass because you will miss out on Hours worth if of If you didn't enjoyment. notice, we did not stand in a lot of lines. And it's, it's, that's because we utilize the Max Pass and uh, went at the proper hours. If they raised the price to $50 a day, I would have bought it. It was that well worth it. We would need a little bit more items for $50. Uh, I'm just, I'm, but I'm just saying, a little bit more. one time visit, if you're only there for like two days, the only way you're going to be able to ride rides is with Max yes. Pass. There's just no other way to yeah, do it. It's agreed. just part of the price. And, mm -hmm. and you get the photo pass. So, you're, so even if you don't care about riding rides, $10 for all your photos. Yeah, it's great. That's nothing. That's way less than Over the course, like, we went to I mean, Disneyland for actually a little bit longer than we went to Disney World. And it was actually cheaper to do the $10 a day yeah. compared to the one sixty nine that I spent yeah. for the four and a half days. Which is crazy. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, watch other bloggers, like we said. Watch vloggers. Get get suggestions. We, we hope you like this video and the other mm -hmm. videos we've done. Please watch those so you can get more insight mm -hmm. on what we did and, and what we saw. And spoiler alert, we're about to do another video 
that is going to be our top 10 of Disneyland. Of Disneyland. Mm-hmm. Top 10 tips and tricks. So definitely watch that. If if you've watched all of this, you might as well watch that too. Right. So another thank, hour thank you for life. watching. This is Board Husband. I'm Board Wife. And we really appreciate your, your viewing this and, and share it. Subscribe. We'll be having more videos. Like it. Yes, like <laughs> it. Hit the bell. All the stupid things you're supposed to do on, on social media and everything else. But seriously, we're going to be doing a lot more Disney trips. Mm-hmm. Not Disneyland, Disney World, but we're the, they're going to be coming sooner rather than later. So we'll hope that you'll come back and watch those with us. Bye. Hey, guys.